Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that and if you're new my this and that is basically a weekly almost weekly vlog that I tried to do just kind of showing some of the things I have going on and to direct you to some older videos or even let you know of videos I have upcoming that you might be interested in so let's get started and I'll show you what I got going on today so what I have right here is some milk kefir going that I'm actually using my boxed whole milk the Gosner milk uh, I'm trying to work through the last of the older milk so I can restock. One of the things I've been doing is turning it into milk kefir. And I have a video on milk kefir that I'll go ahead and link to up here and in the description box. And mostly how I'm using this is for making ranch dressing and for making things like buttermilk, biscuits and pancakes. It's really good in your biscuits and pancakes or any other kind of thing that you would like to use buttermilk in. Milk kefir is a good substitute for buttermilk and I like this better because it's easy for me to always keep some going and once you have a batch made this is also a great way to preserve milk. So if you have a lot let's say of goats you have a lot of goat milk coming in um, if you don't want to freeze it, which is doable, and I have a video on about freezing uh, different things, including milk, so I'll go ahead and link to that as well. But if you're wanting to preserve it in another way, this is a way to do it because it will keep very for a very long time. Now, I would guess it's possible you could even keep it on a shelf, not in the refrigerator for a period of time, though I wouldn't be able to tell you for how long. I've never tried that. I typically keep it in the fridge. I know that it will keep for months and months in the fridge once it's been fermented, just like anything else that's been fermented. It will last for quite a while. So this is one way to preserve your milk, and then you can just have that milk if you like to, if you actually like to drink it, then that's great, or you can do it like I do, using it um, in baked goods because it just makes a really great uh, for any kind of quick bread that you're going to do that you would use the buttermilk in or the ranch dressing like I said it's a good replacement for yogurt or sour cream when making the uh, ranch dressing or you could even make sour cream out of your milk kefir by using a heavier uh, like a richer milk like using a whipping cream for that or just simply let your milk kefir set out for a longer period of time after you take the grains out and it will continue to thicken and it will get very very thick so it's better though to take those grains out after 24 hours because once it really thickens it's kind of harder to find the grains and get them out but really it's it's pretty simple after that 24 hours you can just take a wooden spoon you don't even have to strain it like i did in the milk kefir video actually what i do is just take a spoon and I, a wooden spoon and i keep stirring it up and just pulling out the lumps of kefir grains and if some stays in there it's not going to hurt anything if you eat it it's actually really good for you and then a, a question on the grains they're not grains as in uh like a, a wheat grain or anything like that. They're only called grains because of the shape and size that they are. Though they tend to clump together, they're just little grains, granule kind of thing. So they're, um, it's not, it ha it's totally gluten free. So it has nothing to do with, with grains that you would grow in your garden. So anyway, um, that's what I'm doing. And then one of the things I'm gonna be trying is using my whole milk powder to try making a batch of kefir to see how it turns out, or kefir. I know I always pronounce it wrong. So speaking about milk, I'll set this aside for a minute. The um, One of the other things I'm gonna do, I haven't done in a long time, and I'm gonna start today, is a batch of Brazil nut milk. Now I'm always making different kinds of nut milks, Typically, I like the cashew pecan because of all the different things I like to use the pulp for and the milk as well. However, Brazil nut milk is also very good. And if you have a low thyroid, low functioning thyroid, any way you can get Brazil nuts more into your diet is really good. Because a single Brazil nut is going to have your RDA, your US RDA for selenium for the day. So eating a couple of those is really going to help boost your thyroid because selenium is one of those things that does boost your thyroid. And again, one of the ways, one of the other many ways that we got off our thyroid medication was, at least for me, introducing... Uh, finding more ways to get Brazil nuts. I love Brazil nuts, Patrick doesn't, but I do. So 
I'll be starting a batch of Brazil nut milk. In fact, I'll do that right now. And if you're interested in the full process of making a nut milk, I'll go ahead and link to one of my last videos up above there in the iCards and in the description box. But it's really simple. Um, I'm just going to do about, that's a little more than a cup, a cup of Brazil nuts. And then I'm just going to cover them with water and let them soak overnight. Now, because these are whole like this, I definitely want to let them go ahead and soak for 24 hours. That's going to work out best. And then I'll just, I'll drain the water out, rinse them, and then I'll make the milk from there. So tomorrow afternoon, I will have some Brazil nut milk. And then I'll take, probably take the pulp from that and dehydrate it and use it as a flour in the next batch of pancakes I make after that. Or you can even just use the pulp, um, you can just refrigerate it and then just try to use it right away. So you don't have to dehydrate it. If you think you're going to use it right away in something like pancakes or muffins, that's a really good option for any of your nut pulps that you have. If you're making a nut or even a seed milk, which is the next thing I want to talk about is the seed milk. Um, one of the other things I wanted to try was making pumpkin seed milk to see what I thought about that. So I did get myself some pumpkin seeds and the one, these are the Terrasol organic ones. I love Terrasol because they're one of the brands that you can routinely get through the subscribe and save program on Amazon and save yourself 15% if you get at least five items or more. Um, delivered monthly and you can change it at any time so if you haven't checked into that check in that program I really like it and they even send you an email to let you know that uh, hey you know you're it's about time for your delivery is there anything you want to change and you can delete things and add things and whatever you want to do it's a really great program saves you 15% so I will go ahead and link down below to the to the Terrasol pumpkin seeds and these are raw and organic so don't expect them to be crunchy because they are raw so you can always toast them or roast them yourself but I want to keep them raw because I'm going to be using them to make pumpkin seed milk at least to try it and if I don't like it as a as a milk then I'll use these up in another way and uh, then the other Terrasol thing I recently got I bought these before are their medjool dates. Medjool dates are my favorites because they're the ones that have the, the flavor that's most like caramel to me and they're just bigger and softer and a little sweeter in, in my personal opinion. But these ones will have the seeds in them. So um, if, you're, if you decide to get these, just keep in mind that you'll need to pit them yourselves. But they're really good and the thing about this is you can use the medjool dates in conjunction with making your nut milk if you want to add a little sweetness to your nut milk then you can take one or two of these and toss them in there typically i'll keep my especially if i'm doing the pecan cashew i will not sweeten it or add vanilla to it at all because of how i plan on using the pulp in making a vegan cheese out of but um if you're if you're going to use the pulp for adding to muffins and pancakes uh, then yeah, go ahead and add a couple of medjool dates and then and then toss in a little bit of your vanilla extract or whatever other flavored extract you've made. Yeah, anyways, uh, really good stuff. And I personally just love to snack on, um, I try to be careful not to eat too many, but uh, you know, a couple a day of the medjool dates. So I'll take the medjool, maybe one medjool date, break it open, take the pit out, and then take a couple of Brazil nuts and then put one of those on each half of the date and then sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on there. Makes a really great snack that's gonna that's loaded full of minerals and protein and um, gives you a little bit of an energy boost for the day. I just love that. It's just a great snack. And oh, and the and the Brazil nuts I did also get on Amazon. I didn't um, I didn't see them in the Terrasol, but I did find some that seemed like a pretty good deal. And I'll go ahead and link to those if you're interested in trying those. And also to the the milk powder. I also get this on the subscribe and save. So it's one of the best deals I found on a whole milk, non-GMO, uh, hormone-free milk powder that uh, it's hard to find a good whole milk powder there's not very many out there there's one other i really like hoosier hill farms this one is a little better deal though so i recommend that one and i'm adding this in this is at the actually after i finish out the video but i forgot to mention about the seeds the dates and the um nuts here 
The what I didn't have in the jars for immediate use, I vacuum sealed into mason jars like this. So I do a lot of vacuum sealing using my brake bleeder and that's how I did that. One thing I wanna recommend on your dates is don't stock up on too many at a time, but if you do put them in the freezer, I'm okay with doing this for a short period of time vacuum sealing but the dates will ferment in here they actually turn out quite tasty but once they start fermenting they will it'll cause the seal to it will cause it to lose its seal so i've tried that before i had a bunch of them in jars and they were all one at a time starting to ferment going from the oldest to the newest so just a little tip there i wanted to throw in before i forgot and then over here i'm starting to get kind of low on my mixed spice blend um, now that I'm getting into that time of the year that I start using this on a daily basis, um, I, liked, I, I like having coffee. Um, and so sometimes in, when it gets to be fall, I like to put a pinch of this. Typically, I drink my coffee black. But at this time of year, I like to add a pinch of this to my coffee. I also use this in my Jet Fueled Latte blend and also add it to my teas. If I feel like my tea needs a little boost because it's kind of boring, I put a pinch of this in there. So I have a recipe video on this that I give that you can check out. I'll go ahead and link to so that you can use that as a base and then add to it whatever you want. Change up the ratios however you want. I believe by the looks of it, this one probably has a little bit of turmeric in it. And I don't remember if in that video I added turmeric, but that's an option. And I, you know, I can tell by the color. It's just got a little bit of that turmeric. But uh, anyway, it's one of my... It's one of those things and you can do so much with that once you have it blended up. So, and again, add it to your Jet Fueled Latte blend. Now, I only get five iCards up here, but I'm starting to get in the habit more and more just putting links in the description box anyway. So, I might mention all these things. You might not see the iCard pop up, but if I mention a video, check out in the description box. I will make sure it at least gets in there, unless I forget. And if I forget, remind me and I'll find it for you and I'll get it in there. So, yes, I have a, a recipe on the Mixed Spice and on the Jet Fueled Latte blend that I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll have that, sometimes I'll have coffee, but for a while I was doing just that while I was letting my body totally heal with the, you know, getting the thyroid back to normal and boosting it and all that. So, and, and some of you may be new, so you might not realize that Patrick and I were on thyroid medication for 15 years and about seven, eight years ago, I took ourselves off the medication and, uh, for me, I needed a time, more time to adjust than he did, but you know, we've come out the other side we're doing great and no we're not dead imagine that doctors like to scare you into believing that you can die if you don't stay on that thyroid medication but your body is self-healing and if you just have hypothyroidism especially if it's based off maybe uh, some gut problems or some other underlying issue which is usually the deal then you can heal your thyroid and get it back to normal without the help of pharmaceuticals okay and a couple more things I wanted to mention and that was I think it was my last this in that video. I don't know which one. I was talking about using <laughs> canning lids inside of your plastic lids like this. Just sticking a canning lid in there is a cheap way, a used canning lid at that, to um, add a liner to the inside of any of your lids that you want to have a better seal on it. And this is one way to do it. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is in one of my other th videos, I had talked about how I take the craft lids because I think they're cool but they're not meant for food use and I'll usually uh, put a little bit of beeswax in there and melt it and spread that around and I still recommend that especially around the edges because it helps give it a nice coating that makes it um not want to rust and stick to your jars if you have a little bit of moisture in there however somebody mentioned and the funny thing was is the very day that video published I thought why am I not trying the canning lids inside the craft lids that's a lot easier to do and so yes they do work and they do fit inside the craft lids they fit tighter though because the craft lids have a little bit of taper especially the regular mouth ones uh, the the canning lids will fit in there a little tighter than they will in here but that's okay because that makes them less likely to fall out when you take them off of there and then you can get a nice food safe seal onto your jars and still use the cute craft lids on there so yes it does it does work so 
I tried it and I'm going to start doing that from now on and then I don't have to worry about messing around with the beeswax and you don't have to pay money for those silicone liners that they make to go inside those things. And then um, another thing is um, I made a batch of hot sauce out of my five, Chinese five color peppers and so I'm going to be shooting a video of this hopefully today so be watching for that to come out real soon and um, I only made a little bit to start with but I've already used about half of it anyway I, I'm really happy with it so it's a fermented hot sauce and then one more thing that I recently got and I, I have to admit I'm not a big stevia person though I did grow it over the summer and was using it especially while I was doing my detox diet which I do plan on doing a video about diets detoxing quote unquote why i do it how i do it and how it works for me so anyway i was using the stevia because i was trying to stay away from all sugars except for anything that came come directly from fruit but sometimes you just want that little bit of sweetness so i was using the stevia from my garden and i thought well maybe i'll finally break down and buy some powdered stevia because other than using it in tooth powder in the past which i stopped doing a long time ago um I've always been skeptical about it because you most of the stuff that you buy has got additives in it or some other stuff that I don't personally consider that natural. It's usually half and half and that's to keep the cost down lower. But then I found this one for a reasonable price on Amazon that is also available through subscribe and save and thought I would give it a try. And I tell you, I was really surprised and I will link to this below too with the other things that I've got it right now in my little Fido jar here. I was, I should have read the directions because I knew that it was really sweet. And I just kind of going off my fresh stevia from the garden, which me not thinking the fact that there's a lot more there in the fresh stevia than in the stevia powder that you buy. There's a lot more when you're getting it directly from the plant. And so I put in, I was making a milkshake and it was about two glasses worth. So maybe about 16 ounces of a of a milkshake with using zucchini and some blackberries from the garden and uh, I put in probably about a quarter teaspoon of the stevia maybe a little bit more oh dear it was super super sweet so if you've never used stevia I got to looking at the at the thing on here it says uh, one thirty second of a teaspoon so I had to go out and pick a bunch more blackberries and then really make a bigger batch. And it's still pretty sweet, but uh, that did help break it down. So now I can see why it's so expensive because this is going to last this little bit here. If I was just to do this, it will last for a very long time. And now I don't feel so skeptical and concerned. Even though I know it's all natural, I don't feel as concerned about using this on a more regular basis. One of the things about this one, like I said, is it's pure 100% stevia. And it took me a while to find one that was just that. And so that's why I got this one. And then be able, being able to get it through subscribe and save, I thought was, you know, it saved me even more money. So. Um, so far I think I'm going to be happy with it. I just need to learn how to work with those ratios because it's totally different for me. And I'm not going to completely, totally avoid all other sugars, um, especially sugars that come directly from fruits. But for those times that I'm needing to just kind of really stay back from sugar because there are those times that, you know, even if you don't want to go completely cane sugar free or coconut sugar free or whatever other kind of real, real sugar, honey, molasses, even though those are more healthy sugars, um, sometimes you need to, to totally rid that for a time and give your body a chance to reset and help to heal some of the gut issues. But again, I'll be talking about that more in my diet detox diet whatever i'm going to call it video coming down the road i'll try to get it shot this week but no promises there because i got to sit down and take notes so i can remember everything i want to say in it but anyway just um i do recommend this uh and i'll be playing with it and doing some updates on that no i'm not doing keto or anything like that um I'll talk about that more in that video as well. All right, and before I go, I want to show you a picture right here. So this is obviously Patrick and me and our son Ryan with his new wife, Kayla, and our other son, Justin. Justin is the younger. He's also the tallest one out of all of us, as you can see. None of us are very tall, but um, obviously you can see who's the shorty pants of the group. Okay, anyway, I just thought it was a lovely picture. 
and I wanted to show it to you, especially if you don't have Facebook and you don't get to see some of that stuff on there. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for this week. And if you have any questions of anything you see here or anything else, go ahead and put them below and I'll try my best to get in there and answer them as soon as I see them. I kind of have set times during the day where I try to get in there. And lately, oh, I tell you, it's been super busy. I've had so many custom orders just flooding me all at once of all different varieties, not just for skirts. So it's just been crazy busy and it's been harder for me to keep up on comments. But regardless, I will see them at some time or hopefully I'll see them at some time. So don't give up on me and remember every comment counts and we really appreciate your interaction. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.